Hello, welcome back to the channel, and today we'll be talking about the five teams that are in danger of falling off. Team number one, horns down. Texas, they're really in danger. Now, this is going to be uh, uh, the next two teams, really. Them and the next team are really in the, kind of the same position in my boat here. And they're talented offensive teams with questionable defense. Moving to a conference doesn't really fit their style of play. And a lot of people think that them, them, and I'll just say it, it's USC, right? So it's them and USC. Both of them are offensive teams, right? That love to pass the ball, sling it around, do that sort of thing. And they have questionable defenses, right? And how is that going to work in the SEC and the Big Ten? Probably not well. Has USC done anything? Well, obviously, it's been one year for them. Have they done anything recently in the Pac-12, you know, especially with Lincoln, mostly, to warrant it, right? You look at USC, right, and if they couldn't really hang with the SEC schools, so they're at least a little bit of a better spot going to the Big Ten, right? But, like, if they play a team like Iowa that's got a suffocating defense and they're just going to run and bleed the clock, I, I just – the styles there just don't match, and that's where you get upsets. And most of the teams in the Big Ten are closer to Iowa than they are to the USC. Like, I know that's no kidding to a lot of people. Like, I would say the only team they could really just do that to would be, like, you know – Maryland, I guess, and Ohio State like kind of play their same style. But other than that, it's like it's a lot of slow round and pound teams. Like it, try and bring that, you know, Caleb Williams offense against Michigan. I think we kill them. I, mean, I know I'm biased being a Michigan fan, but like if they don't get that defense figured out, they're in trouble. And obviously one's going to think that Malachi Nelson, their upcoming quarterback, isn't going to be, you know, as good as Caleb Williams is. Granted, every guy that Lincoln Riley's had has been a Heisman guy, but, you know, it's just interesting to see how USC is going to really do this. Um, I know I'm kind of flipping them with Texas, but I'll just talk about Texas too. Same thing with Quinn Ewers, right? Quinn Ewers is the highest rated recruit we've ever seen in terms of uh, offense, right? I, actually, I don't know if it's offense. I think it's just been the highest recruit in general. Went over to Ohio State, came out. Now he's at Texas. Played well for a few games, um, well, I guess a game and a half, and then got hurt, and he kind of wasn't the same after that. He was objectively bad last year, as crazy as it is. And you're now going to probably be taking Arch Manning, you're going to be going to the SEC and also playing Michigan. So, like, you, you couldn't get it done so far in the Big 12, right? Which is an objectively very much easier conference than the SEC. And now you're going to have to go play guys like Georgia, play guys like Alabama, play teams like, I don't know, Florida even. It's going to be a much harder thing to do. Like, if you're losing to some of these Big 12 teams, what's going to happen when you have to play the SEC gauntlet? Like, even Arkansas isn't a team you can even hide from. You know, you're going to get that rivalry back with A&M, right? That's another big, tough game you're going to probably play every year. It's just like they have the same thing as USC. you got to figure out the defense. USC, at least, is going to objectively worse conference, you know, especially top to bottom wise, where they can still, you know, hang around 10 wins. But obviously, I don't think that's kind of the goal for any of these big-time programs. But Texas making the jump to the SEC, obviously, it'll help a little with recruiting. You'll be able to be like, hey, look, now you're going to be in the SEC. We're playing these big schools. But... It's just these two teams, it's like you really got to figure out this defense. You really got to make sure you have this crazy lead offense, even if your defense isn't that good. Because what's different between USC, Texas, and like a Tennessee-type team, right? You know, these crazy offenses, not so much defenses, hurry up, go fast. I know it's probably disrespectful to USC and Texas to say that, but I don't know if I would say that Tennessee would lose to them. I mean, USC lost to Tulane. And that was with no opt-outs, really. I mean, the, the few opt-outs, but, like, not that many. You know, Washington beat Texas. Like, these aren't crazy games where it's like these guys are getting blown out by bad teams. It's like, no, they, these are, like, lesser teams and you'd be playing in your conference on a week-to-week -week basis and you're losing to them. I, I don't know. I know it's crazy and I'm probably jumping too much here, but that's kind of the point of this video, right? Um, up next, UNC. They're pretty easy to talk about here, right? You think of them, they're a quarterback factory. I also have a video on them on the channel. I'll hopefully remember to link it at some point. But it's like, if you lose Drake May, obviously you're going to, how are you going to replace him, right? Is there another good quarterback coming in? Is the system that good where these guys can just come in like Sam Howell and like Drake May and just become good? Maybe. How much longer are you going to keep Mac Brown around? He's obviously getting real old, one of the oldest coaches in college football. Is he going to stick around for a bunch more years? Are you recruiting a lot of really good guys? I know they got that receiver, Jordan Ship over Michigan. But it's like, okay, UNC, you're having these generational quarterbacks. Your defense is terrible, and you can't stop anyone. 
to the point where you're wasting almost this generational talent quarterback. And that's crazy to say, but it's true, right? You've got a Drake, man. You've had Sam Howell, and you've realistically nothing with it, right? I know it's traditionally hard to say that 10 wins is nothing, but in today's day and age, it's really, you know, playoff or bust. You know, last year they made the ACC championship game in a down ACC year, but that's still an accomplishment. I mean, obviously, I think that's good, but in terms of, you know, that's with a generational quarterback. What if they have a three-star guy next year? What if they have a game manager type, not even a Heisman-type candidate that they've had the past few seasons? What if it's a bad guy? What if it's like some, you know, again, some fall off at quarterback? Their defense isn't good enough. Their skill positions aren't nearly as good enough as they used to be to kind of justify that fall off. So UNC is really close to going back to a crazy basketball-only school. Up next, we've got Florida. Now, I know this is another team where it's like one bad year, blah, 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 blah. You had a very good quarterback. Obviously, it wasn't so much a college quarterback. Clearly, he was more of an NFL quarterback with him going fourth overall, despite being an objectively bad quarterback in college. It's like, okay, you have Billy Napier. You fired Dan Mullen because he wasn't recruiting well enough, yet Billy Napier's recruiting at the same level, basically. Dan Mullen had you beating Georgia and getting to the SEC championship game a lot of times, right? It was competitive. Obviously, Georgia's gotten way better. Florida's completely fallen off. Florida doesn't even... You think Georgia cares about Florida like they used to? Obviously, I know the game is still a rivalry game, but they're more focused on Alabama. They're more focused on even Tennessee now, right? Tennessee came out and was like, oh, like we can, we can get this going. I mean, UCF is stealing recruits from Florida. That's, never, that's unheard of. UCF beat Florida Bowl game a few years ago, right? So it's... Florida's a really cool brand, great colors, great uniforms. I love everything about Florida, but it's like... These kids don't care about the traditions as much as they used to, right? So you got to make sure you're doing the right thing. And and if Billy Napier is not doing a good job, you need to get him out of there quick. I don't think that's necessarily the problem. But when you're at a, such a good level, and I almost appreciate Florida for doing it in a weird way, and it's hard for me to be, do what I'm doing and look back on him like, hey, you should have done this, should have done that. But it's like you got rid of Dan Mullen because he wasn't good enough, and you've had nothing close to it. Like if Florida goes, what, eight and four this year? Is that even like an accomplishment? I don't know. I mean, it is in terms of the win total, because I believe the win total is what, six, five and a half, something crazy low. It's Florida. You should be making a bowl game, no issue, right? I know they did last year, despite all the craziness going on, but it's just, you lose to Vanderbilt, man. I I don't know. It's, it's weird. And they've, again, they've gotten a bit better of a recruiting class, but recruiting has never been an issue at Florida, right? It's, 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 they need a quarterback, and they've got Grand Mertz starting, man. I don't know. I just, you know, watch out, Florida. It could get ugly quick. In the final team, despite them being my rival, I'm trying to be objective here. It's Michigan State. Let's just be honest. Was the Kenneth Walker season a fluke? Was it him carrying everything? Is this not going to work? Has Tuck gotten the biggest and worst contract in the history of sports? Potentially. That's a question we're going to have to ask. Michigan State is another team, just like Florida said. You're too good of a team to be having to fight for a bowl game. They're plus money in Vegas to make a bowl this year. That's crazy. I know the schedule is tough, and the side you're on in the conference is ridiculous. If you're in the Big Ten West, it'd be a totally different story. But I don't even know if you're going to win any of those crossover games either, right? That's Those, those are no shoe wins. And your quarterback's a big issue. You need to follow that up there. It's a lot of things that are similar to every guy on this list, especially like a Florida and the UNC. Figure out the quarterback. The defense is getting better. Your secondary was horrible a few seasons ago, even the year you're really good. And you're a cornerback's coach. That's kind of like the whole, like, he be, he said the I'm a horseshit football coach. That was his quote, right? It was kind of because of that. It's like, dude, the position group you coach is the worst in the team. What's going on here? But if he gets David Stone to commit, if he gets a little bit of juice this year, if they win a few games, they, they, they keep chopping, as they are saying. It could turn on quickly, but they're in danger of it going bad. I don't think it will happen because that's the whole point of these videos. I don't know if it'll happen for any of these teams, but it's something we got to start thinking about. And that money, I don't know what it's like, $70 million at this point. It's going to be a tough pill to swallow, but you really got to think about it. You can't go a few years of being real bad, especially in today's era where you can get teams really good overnight. You got to really open up the checkbook and be like, all right, do we want to keep Mel and pay more recruits or do we want to buy this guy out? Because the money is still there, but it's going to some different stuff. So you got to always lock in and make sure you got the money in the right spot, whether it's going to recruits or you're going to have to spend it all on the buyout and then have no recruits and screw the next guy, right? So again, I'm just an armchair GM sitting here doing my thing. I don't get paid the big bucks to make those decisions. You know, God bless those that do and those boosters that do. But uh, 
that's pretty much all I got for now. So uh, please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Let me know if you agree or not with these teams, if there's somebody I missed. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.